we will now start with the next type of division that is meiosis. Meiosis is also known as reductional division. The reason why it is called reductional division is that the daughter cells which are formed, they have half the number of chromosomes as, that, as compared to that of the parent cell. Now, let us talk about few scientists. Uh, when we talk of uh, some historical background, the information that we get is that meiosis was first reported in the egg of sea urchin. So in egg of sea urchin, it was first reported. And when we talk of the scientist who reported it, we get many names, but the most authentic name where there is a reference of chromosome number is Van Benden. So, uh, discovered or explained by Van Benden. So, these two informations we have where there is a slight variation in the sense before Van Benden, there were other scientists who said that during gamete formation, the number of chromosomes re gets reduced. But the most authentic information that we have when meiosis was described in terms of the reduction in chromosome number is of Van Benden. The term meiosis was given by two scientists, Farmer and Moore. So these were the two scientists who actually gave the term meiosis. Now meiosis takes place in almost all eukaryotic cells which undergo sexual reproduction. The cells in which meiotic division takes place are known as meiocytes. So meiocyte term is given to the cells which can or undergo meiosis. So now which are those cells which can undergo meiosis? In higher organisms, the cells of the gonads, that is germinal epithelium, these are the cells which divide by meiotic division and produce the haploid cells which we call the gametes. Such type of meiotic division is known as gametic meiosis. So meiocytes are the cells which are actually capable of undergoing meiosis. So let us see what types of meiosis are there. So when we talk of meiosis or types, we have three names. The first is known as gametic meiosis. What is gametic meiosis? The higher organisms in which the uh, cells of testes or ovaries, they undergo this kind of division to produce gametes. So it is seen in higher organisms. In higher organisms. And it results in formation of haploid gametes. So this is the first type, gametic meiosis. The second is known as zygotic meiosis. So gametic meiosis in higher organisms. Zygotic meiosis is seen in lower organisms. So this is in lower organisms. Now when we say lower organisms, it could be like a simple green alga, say chlamydomonas. These organisms are normally haploid. When the haploid organisms fuse, so when they have to reproduce sexually, then these two haploid organisms start behaving like gametes. They fuse to form a zygote, which is a diploid structure. And this zygote then undergoes meiosis to form haploid cells. And these haploid cells again start leading their life as haploid individuals. So then that kind of meiosis is known as zygotic meiosis. It is seen in lower organisms. And the third type is known as 
sporic meiosis. And as the name tells us, it helps in spore formation, especially like in pteridophytes and all. So the spore producing cell, the spore mother cell is diploid. So example that is in pteridophytes. Pteridophytes. Even in angiosperms, gymnosperms, the spore producing cell, which we call the spore mother cell, in case of plants, we'll call it microspore mother cell or megaspore mother cell. So when they divide, they produce haploid spores. So this is for formation of haploid spores. So this is, these are the three types of meiotic divisions that we talk of. Now, before we take up all the stages of meiosis, we need to have a flow chart ready in how many phases, sub phases, will this division take place. So meiosis is completed in two parts, which we call meiosis 1, and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, again the same thing, the nucleus is going to divide first. So it will be karyokinesis followed by cytokinesis. Karyokinesis, cytokinesis, now these are common terms. In mitosis also we are using the same terms. So how do we differentiate it from whether it is karyokinesis of the mitotic division or of meiosis? So what we do is we put this number in front of it. So this will be called karyokinesis 1. This will be called cytokinesis 1. And here we would have karyokinesis 2 and cytokinesis 2. So in this also karyokinesis that is nuclear division which is going to be 2 and again cytokinesis that is cytoplasmic division but of meiosis 2 so number 2. Karyokinesis is completed in the same four phases prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase but as I said we will put number 1 here. So in this we will have prophase and we will call it prophase 1 followed by metaphase. So this will be metaphase 1, third anaphase, again 1, then fourth telophase and again 1. And as we said 1 will indicate that this is a part of meiosis 1 and 2 would indicate it as a part of meiosis 2. And the same terms when written without any number, that means those are of mitotic division. And then cytokinesis. Let me write the stages here also and then we'll add few things. So here what is going to happen is in karyokinesis 2, same prophase. This time it is going to be 2, then metaphase 2. Next stage is going to be anaphase 2 and last of karyokinesis would be telophase 2. So here the nucleus is going to divide followed by cytoplasmic division and then the cell will enter meiosis 2. Again the nucleus would divide and then cytokinesis 2. But there is one additional thing which is going to happen here and that is in prophase 1. Prophase 1 is a very long phase and it gets completed in 5 subphases. So here we would have 5 subphases of prophase 1 and they are known as leptotene, then zygotene, the third is known as pachytene or sometimes it is also known as pachytene. Then diplotene and the last is dikinesis. That means and because we are using these terms for the first time, 
there is no number one or two. So in mitosis, we saw simple prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Here, because meiosis gets completed in two halves, the first half is known as half, not in terms of uh, the time period, phases wise. So first half or first part is meiosis one. All the stages under this would be written with one in front of the name. Like karyokinesis 1, then the stages as prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and cytokinesis. Prophase 1, as we said, these are the five subphases in which the prophase gets completed. So this would result in the meiotic division. But let us also understand one very important thing. The cell which is going to divide by meiosis, this cell which is entering this division has completed interphase. So interphase cell is going to come into this meiotic division. And we have seen interphase in detail. The cell prepares itself for the division. So here G1, S, G2 phase and the cell has prepared itself. The DNA has replicated and then this division takes place. So during this division, all those things which the cell has prepared get used up. Here we see the cell has to divide again. So should there be some more preparation which the cell needs so that it is ready for this division? So after cytokinesis 1, the cells, they, before entering into karyokinesis, they go through a short phase of preparation. And this phase is known as interkinesis. And interkinesis is different from interphase in one big respect. In interphase, there is DNA replication. That means there was S phase. In interkinesis, there is no S phase. That means the DNA replication takes place only once and that is it interface. So a cell does interface, prepares itself, comes into meiosis, goes through meiosis 1, all these stages, divides into two daughter cells, then prepares itself for a very short period of time, which is known as interkinesis. And interkinesis is only a little bit of growth, which is going to be there, preparation, but there is no S phase. That means, again, the DNA replication is not going to take place. Now, the cell gets into meiosis 2 and divides. So, if we have to just sum up, what is happening is, say so this is a meiocyte. That means, the cell which is undergoing division, it goes through meiosis 1. We would get two daughter cells. This is what we are talking about. We'll do these steps in detail, but... Meiocyte is deployed and here the chromosome number gets reduced to half. And these two daughter cells again go through this part that is meiosis 2. And as a result of this, we would get four daughter cells with n number of chromosomes. How this takes place that we will see when we talk of this in detail. But what we can conclude from this simple thing is meiosis 1 is reductional because from parent cell here the daughter cells are getting, getting half the number of chromosomes. Meiosis 2 for if or only for this particular part these are the parent cells and these are the daughter cells. So here daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes as that of the parent, immediate parent cell. So meiosis 2 is equational division Meiosis 1 is reduction. That is the part. But when we talk of the complete meiosis, starting from the parent cell, that is meiocyte, there are four haploid cells which are obtained. And these haploid cells in higher organisms, they act as gametes. So this is the summary of the meiotic division. Now in the next stage, we will start with the actual process and there are many complicated things which are going to happen here like 
crossing over and chiasma formation and all those things. So that we will take up in detail from the next 